Vocals are the best way to add theming to your track. They really allow you to tell a story, but what I've heard from a lot of producers is that they struggle with finding vocals and also using them in their tracks. So in today's video, I want to tackle that issue and I want to show you how to use vocals. And to do that, I've come up with five different ways of using vocals within your music. So this is the project. This is a project that I've worked on on stream a while back and I've worked on it some more and I've added in the vocals that I wanted to use. So I will have a quick little demo so that you can hear the different ways that we use them and then we'll talk about it. Now simulation theory is the idea that we are living in a simulation. That the world that we live in is not the real world, but it's just a simulation that somehow we are hallucinating. Much like being cocooned inside the matrix while we all live out our lives. So the thing that people tend to wonder most about are the spoken vocals. So let's start off with those. So here we have them. This is what they sound like. Now simulation theory is the idea that we are living in a simulation. So spoken vocals are mainly used to just give the track a theme. That's what they're good at. That's what they do. Because obviously within a spoken vocal you can really talk about a specific subject matter. So it's crucial to find good vocals to start with. And the way that I do that is a little bit of a secret. Obviously, as an artist, that's one of my trade secrets, how I get my vocals. The important thing is that you have a theme in mind. And once you go searching for vocals, that they actually fit the theme. So in general, there's a whole bunch of different places that you can get vocals from. The problem is legality. So getting stuff licensed if you need to, or creating vocals in such a way that licensing is not needed. If you really mangle up the vocals, then copyright doesn't really apply. With that, obviously it's not okay to just take it from anywhere. You do have to be specific where you take it from, but usually you're gonna know if you're going to get in trouble or not, depending on the creator of the original. If you're sampling something or if you're licensing something, then obviously you're going to be fine. So now let's talk a little bit about this processing. Honestly, there's nothing much interesting happening here. First thing that happens is that we have an EQ here, which is just taking away a lot of the frequencies and that then goes into a distortion. It just wanted to get kind of like that gritty radio voice. To also accomplish that, I added an OTT to them. So normally this is kind of compression is really, really strong on vocals, but I wanted kind of that, that pumped feeling that you get from old radios where everything is like pushed together. I then added some stereo width and a clipper here. And finally, with some delay and reverb, we get the final vocals. So as I said, and as you can see, there's not really much special going on here at this point. It is just a matter of getting the vocals to sit well within your track and to add the effects that you actually want them to have. Maybe something that you can do is a little bit of pitching or a little bit of format shifting or a little bit of both. That tends to work very well in making that kind of psychedelic texture that you want. As an example, I've added a little Alter Boy here right after the OTT. I'm going to play with the formats a little bit so you can hear what kind of effect that has. Now, simulation theory is the idea that we are living in a simulation. That the world that we live in is not the real world, but it's just a simulation that somehow we are hallucinating. Much like being inside the matrix while we all live out our lives. 
Also, as you can see with the pitch, you can get some cool psychedelic effects from there. Now, the next technique that I want to show you is for those who have actual trouble finding the vocals still, even if you have searched online for vocals that fit your team, you might not be able to find it. Then you can always resort back to text to speech. Now, there's a lot of generators online that you can use, but there's also one in Vital. And Desk Glitch actually did a very nice video on the one in Vital, so I'm not going to dive into the technique too much. But essentially, within Vital, you can go in and then use text to wavetable to make the wavetable say whatever you want. And then with some clever modulation, you can run through the different wavetables that you have. And you can activate and deactivate them with some modulation as well, like I'm doing here. This one is completely closed because I wanted to use the first two for that. And then you can record that into an audio form. And I did this a few times to get a few different audio samples that I then used throughout the track. So here you can see those recordings. This is one of them. This is on its own track because the processing is a little bit different. Now let's begin. So nice robotic voice. And here's another example. Inside the simulation. Again, a little bit robotic. You can hear that it's not an actual human speaking it. It is a wavetable after all. Mind controlled. And here again for the processing, there's not much happening. We're just doing a little bit of saturation here to get it louder. And then we use a stereo maker to actually introduce some stereo width into the sound. Next up here, there's a little bit of an interesting chain where we process the mids and the sides differently. So here, this mutes the sides. So we have the mids isolated. And for this other one here, which is on the other track, we have the mids muted and thus the sides isolated. And on those sides, we're doing uh, quite a strong overdrive here and then we take away some of the higher frequencies that we don't want and also some of the rubble here. This other audio effect is just a dry wet rack for this black hole so that I could EQ it a bit and compress it to the dry signal. That just ducks down the reverb a little bit under the vocal when the vocal is actually playing and it pumps it up after the vocal is gone. Inside the simulation. Inside the simulation. You can hear the difference here. Inside the simulation. Inside the simulation. Finally, there's a cleanup EQ here just to get rid of any rubble that might be in there. And for this, I mentioned the processing was a little bit different. It just depends a little bit on the actual processing that's happening here in the stereo rack here, as you can see. No EQ. And I believe the stereo maker is also doing a little bit more here. I'm not quite sure. What I like to do if I'm doing processing like this is I'd rather stack a few tracks on top of each other and just make the processing a little bit different rather than turning processes on and off between different snippets of vocals. This way for me is just a little bit easier to work with. So the next technique that I want to show you is actually a little bit stranger and it involves this clip here and it sounds like this. And what I essentially did here is I chopped up a vocal line into different little snippets. So here you can see the actual melody that I'm playing and you can see it's just some repeated gated effects and then some more sustained ones with some more gated ones thrown in the mix towards the end there. In this case, the vocal that I used actually came from a Future Phonics tutorial video and it sounds like this. Let's get psychedelic with the Future Phonics sound. It's a video in which Tristan explains how he uses vocals as well to create psychedelic effects. A little bit different than what we're doing in this video. He actually kind of destroys the vocals to make more of an instrument type thing. In my cases, what I like to do when I'm working with vocals is to keep them in a such a way and not process them in a such a way that they actually remain vocals, that they cannot be mistaken for instruments or synths or whatever. So then it's just about triggering different samples and creating your melody. In this case, this is what I ended up with. And it's just experimentation here. So as you can hear, you can play a lot with that. And in this case, I did a little bit of processing. That's why it doesn't sound like the original vocal anymore. So there's this little altar boy turning up the formants. We get a little bit of extra stereo spread and a little bit of extra saturation. And then we have a delay and a reverb and an EQ just to round out the sound and make it sound a little bit more ambient and get rid of the mud. So you can really hear if I turn off the little altar boy that it's still the same old vocal. It's just chopped up in a strange way. 
but with this little altar boy it becomes a little bit more unrecognizable, which I like. The next sound that I wanted to show you actually came about in a little bit of a strange way. I got a question on my Discord to recreate a specific sound and that ended up being kind of like a vocal chord thing. And that's where this whole track kind of started from. I had actually already explained how to make the sound and the person at the time was not at their PC so I decided to do a little bit more experimentation and that's where I came up with this idea and then turned it into the actual basics for this track. So this is where this whole track started. So this is the sound. Now unfortunately I didn't save this actual sound. If we zoom into here you can see that this is actually a recording. So this is just a frozen thing here. There's a little bit of processing still on there but obviously I cannot show you how to just make this and just leave it like this. You want to know how to make the actual sound. So I want to run through the technique that I've used here. So to start off you need to find the right vocal sample and in this case I'm using Omnisphere. It sounds like this. It's kind of like a choir, kind of big sound. Uh, you can find this in Omnisphere, but also if you have contact maybe. Generally speaking, sample libraries tend to work well for this kind of stuff. Choir sample libraries in particular, they just work for this kind of stuff. So now what you want to do is you want to place one MIDI note as I have in this case, or you can place down chords. In this other one, I actually place down chords, but I like the sound that we get from here. So let's say that we want to use this. First thing is we're going to record it. And now we don't want the start of the sound because we want to give it that snappy attack. So I'm just going to grab some part from here and I'll just isolate that. Let's actually make that half a bar long so that it's the same length. And now let's consolidate that into a new file and turn it up to zero dB so it's nice to look at. Now what I want is I want it to be a little bit snappier. So I'm just going to fade it out like this. And I also want a tiny bit of fade in so that it doesn't click there. So now we can add more effects to this. What I like to do is to do a little bit of a pitch shift on top of this. So for that I'm going to use the kilohertz pitch shifter here. I'm going to turn that up by an octave and then I'm just going to mix it in and I want to set it to high compensation. We can work with automations to maybe say, okay, give it a bit of a plucky, maybe a bit more. You can hear we get a little bit of a snap from that. Another thing that we can do is again play with the formats. Maybe that works on this one. Maybe if we mix that in. Something like that. And now obviously if you want to shape the tone even more you can use something like EQ here. Get out some of those higher frequencies to make it sound a little bit more uh, unnatural and robotic. You can even go for a multiband dynamics. And finally I do want to get a little bit of the attack back so I'm going to use a transient shaper. Now you can record this sound again or you can freeze it. Let's do it like this. Make a recording. Okay. And you can use this within your songs. You can maybe even clean it up some more if you want to add an extra fade maybe. Something like that. And the idea behind this is that this is kind of like a chord step. So you will hear this often in progressive and stuff like that. This doesn't really happen in more like dark side or forest things, but still it's a very cool effect in your tracks. The final method that I want to talk about, which I think is fairly underrated in Sidetrance right now, is just to use choirs. So for example, these two choirs here that sit in the background of this break. They add a very nice atmosphere. You can see there are big chords that I made and then there's a separate melody on top of that.
and on its own, this doesn't really sound good to me. Um, but if we play it in the background with the rest of the elements, it sounds really nice because it kind of fills out the space with an extra human voice. Now, simulation theory is the idea that we are living in a simulation. That the world that we live in is not the real world, but it's just a simulation that somehow we are hallucinating. Much like being cocooned inside the matrix while we all live out our lives. As you could hear from that example, it fills out the space nicely. So that's the final thing that I want to say. And in this case, you can think of it in the same way as the chords that we used before. You just start off from like an Omnisphere patch or a contact patch. Any sample library will work for this. And it's just a matter of writing down the melody. And that's a little bit of experimentation. Now, I'm not the best at music theory, so I won't be teaching music theory here right now. But you can come up with other tutorials that can teach you how to make basic chords and then you can use that in your actual tracks. So this is going to be the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, if you did let me know by leaving a like and if you want to see more then subscribe. You can turn on the notifications if you want messages from YouTube whenever I upload. But that's going to be the video for today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.